Just imagine that you are stuck in a locked room, wanting to go out, but there is no escape. How much torture would that be for you? That is the amount of torture that the liquid experiences when air or vapor gets entrapped in a pump system. Today we are going to discuss about air entrainment, its effects on pump system, possible ways for air to enter into the system, and four tips on how to control them so that you can consider applying them in your pump system right away. Hello everyone, this is Karthik and welcome to the Pump Universe. Let us jump in. An air lock or a vapor lock is a restriction or complete stoppage of liquid flow caused by air accumulation mostly at the pump inlet of a liquid filled pump system. Now let's look at how it happens in the pump system. Firstly, the air present in the system tries to enter into the pump inlet. Then the centrifugal effect imparted by the impeller veins onto the liquid gas mixture causes the air or gas to separate from the liquid. Liquids gets discharged out, but the air stays in the pump. The eye of an impeller, which is an area of low pressure, is the ideal spot for air or gas accumulation. Then eventually, the air or gas volume increases so much that veins push them to the discharge area, but at the cost of a liquid entering into the impeller. This leads to a dip in the volumetric flow rate. For example, a centrifugal closed impeller pump can have up to 22% of drop in performance with just 2% of air present in the liquid. So how does a gas or air enter into the pump system? Well, there are few possible ways. First is by dissolved gases in liquids. All the liquids have some dissolved gases or air in them. The presence of dissolved gases could be due to its necessity, just like the carbonated drinks. Or due to the chemical reaction, just like the scum, a processed wastewater that can have higher percentage of entrained air. When these liquids are agitated, warmed up or exposed to a chemical reaction, they emit gases into the pump system. Open discharge on pump system. Having an open discharge to the sump lets the air mix with the liquid in the system and if the discharge is too close to the inlet pipe, the chances are that a significant amount of air will enter into the system. Vortexing Vortex is a whirlpool motion of liquids which will invite more air into the system. It is one of the key contributor to the air entrainment, but a least focus element on the pump system. Suction lift conditions Suction lift conditions can be a big source of air bubbles as they are under partial vacuum conditions all the time. And if they have leaks in their fittings, there is a high probability of air to sneak into the pump system. The symptoms of air entrainment and malcavitation are quite similar. Both generate a rumbling sound during pump operation. So how do we differentiate it? Well, one of the way to find out is by throttling the flow control valve. While throttling the flow control valve, if the noise reduces gradually and the pump performance is brought back to the curve, then it is a mild cavitation.
whereas while throttling the valve and see no change in the noise level and performance is still out of the curve then it is due to the air entrainment. Tips to control air lock or air entrainment. Tip number one. Priming. Priming plays a vital role in eliminating the air bubbles, be it self-priming or non-self-priming pump. It is a process of purging on air and therefore it ensures that the negligible amount of air or vapor is present in the system and thereby avoids air entrainment. Tip number two, minimum submergence. Minimum submergence is required to make sure that the effects of air entrapment or vortexing are minimized in a submersible pump. So whenever you are designing a system, please ensure that the minimum submergence mentioned by the manufacturer is met so that we eliminate or minimize the vortexing or air entrapment issues. Tip number three. Fittings or accessories required in the system to minimize the system issues. Reduces. Right type of reduces avoids high points and thereby prevents air pockets formation in the system. For example, instead of using a concentric reducer that has high points in their setup, eccentric flat top reducer is highly recommended type for pump inlets. Vortex breakers. Vortex breakers are proven to minimize the vortexing and having them in the system will reduce the possibilities of formation of air bubbles. Baffle plates. Baffle plates are just like a tennis racket or cricket bat that defends or diverts the direction of ball-like air bubbles to avoid air bubbles migrate to the inlet and hence avoids air entrainment. Tip number four. Pump modifications or pump types to overcome the air entrainment issues. Impellers. Changing impeller types can significantly improve the air handling capability. For example, Vortex impellers can handle up to 22% of air entrainment versus the closed impellers that has negligible tolerance when it comes to air entrainment. Inducers Inducers which provide suction energy to boost the net positive suction head required can be handy to improve the air handling capability as well. Self-priming pump Self-priming pump with an inbuilt check valve and priming chamber has the provision for venting the air during the priming and also the design is such that the air does not come in contact with the impeller Hence, it handles the air in suction lift condition as long as it can handle the system's suction energy conditions. Vacuum Assisted Pump System Vacuum Assisted Pump System is a better solution for extreme suction lift conditions. It is a self-sustained system where vacuum pump creates a cavity in the pump priming chamber that enables the sucking of the liquid from the sump to the priming chamber and lets the main pump run after the priming chamber is filled up above the permissible level. A double disc pump. This four decade old technology pump uses viscous drag and boundary layer concept to pump the liquid. Boundary layer formation ensures that the thinner fluids or gases are nearer to the disc and thicker fluids go through the center of the disc. Due to this partition, these pumps are very effective in controlling the air entrainment up to 70% in volume. Hence, they are one of the go-to options for handling the scum. Using a side channel pump. 
This design enables the gas to escape from the center of the side channel impeller and helps to deliver the liquid with up to 50% of air entrainment. Although these are for low flow high head applications, these pumps are very good at handling refrigerants, gaseous liquids such as LPG. In conclusion, I hope you have now understood that air lock or air entrainment is a universal problem occurring in all pump types. Although small percentage of air provides benefits to the pumping, generally air is like a kryptonite to pump. The key is to make sure that we apply necessary techniques relevant to the system to avoid air entrainment and thereby preventing its effects. If you have enjoyed this video, please like, share and provide your valuable comments in the comment section. If you would like to receive similar content from this channel, please subscribe to Pump Universe. Take care and bye-bye.